Yo, it's Guido coming at you with the Tactics Talk. Welcome back, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And I finally aced the grill, the Grill A15. This took a long time. I actually did TD15 for the 260 with this tank, and it was a class one. <laughs> right before they nerfed it, was able to get 8,000 damage. But because it's a TD, a lot of times you've got that kind of far away damage, right? You've got that damage that someone else spotted, and while you're dropping, you know, five, six, seven, eight thousand damage, sometimes the experience isn't super high. So this thing gets played quite a bit. It is one of the more feared snipers, provided it can remain unseen. But sometimes you have to be seen. Sometimes it's nice to be seen. You know what I mean? It's nice to see you, and I'm glad you could see me. That kind of thing. <laughs> But as a general rule, yes, you do not want to be spotted in this thing. So I'm going to head way back to the back for some Campa Lampa Ding Dong. And now I'm going to work up here and start working this ridge. Because I'm looking for shots maybe on those guys. Notice they're outside of the rings. I'm taking a bit of a risk moving up. But what do I know? I know that the bat chap moved all the way up there. Did not get spotted. So I'm going to follow him up a little bit. Because if he spots anybody on the 1-2 line way back there, I want to be able to hit that, those guys. <clears throat> now, these are going to be very difficult sniper shots. we got these buildings in the way. There's a good chunk of people on the 5-6 line. There's a pretty good chunk of people up on the hill. We've got a decent spread, actually, here. And I like that the bat chat has been able to move up that far without being hit. Now, that doesn't mean there's not people lurking there. More than likely, there are. There we go. No, yes. So we get a little shot into that guy. Long reload on the Grill A-15, so you just got to kind of hang out. That's a lot of their tanks in that one spot right there. This thing will get murdered by arty or other HE firing things. Large HE guns, which is just about every tank on this map. You can see there's a lot of the WZBB things going on right here. Have a nice drink of coffee. Doesn't take a whole lot of hits before you can get up to seven, eight thousand damage in this thing. Still trying to recover from that <clears throat> illness, man. It's rough, I tell you what. That's what the coffee's for. That's what the coffee's for. So we're just camping. It's what you gotta do, man. You are really low on options in a tank like this. It's not like I can go up and poke the ridge like I'm a medium with a good turret or a heavy with a good turret to kind of go look around. I don't really want to be sitting on the 5-6 line, although it would be nice to have shots up onto the side of the hill. Anybody topping over there and seeing me, I'm going to get rained on by Artie immediately. <clears throat> now we've got somebody coming in. And he is just raging. And unfortunately, what he does is he pushes our bat chat out of that spot. That is a bit of a bummer, and we've got to get rid of him before he gets in close enough and lights us all up. And he really wants to. Look at me just coming at us like a spider monkey. He gets turned sideways, and I'm just waiting for my nice little shot. Boom. And we're up to 2,170 just like that. Unfortunately, like I said, he has pushed our bat chat out of that, that nice spot. So I'm going to back up. Because if anybody followed him, a little shot and that was on the side of the turret notice the turret was turned to the side to me that makes it a easier shot if anybody followed him unspotted it would be a bit of a bummer and really i'm taking a bit of a chance moving up here because there could be somebody pretty darn close right now who got in behind the 277 watched him move in and did that unspotted i'm trying to take down the building right there a little bit I see the bat chat making another move. He may come up and light somebody. That's why I'm interested in looking this way. And he's able to move up again. So it looks like nobody really followed him, followed the 277 in. <clears throat> Not that unusual, to be quite honest. I don't think I would have followed the 277 in, that's for sure. And there's a stirb sitting up on the hill. Got to break a little bit of movement there so I can get some... Oh, and that was just bad. One thing about the stirbs that you need to watch for, if you see them kind of squatted down and you can see that they're in siege mode and you see them shift and they're going into travel mode, you only have about 
a second and a half, two seconds to three, depending on which one it is, before it starts moving rather quickly. And because I wasn't as zoomed in as, as I wanted to be, I saw him stop squatting and I could tell he was going to travel mode. I should have shifted my aim slightly right and look for that lead fire, right? Just expect that I'm going to be taking a shot on the move. As it was, I pointed right at him. And when I pickled, he was already starting to move. So that was just bad gunnery on my part. You have to anticipate movement. And what I'm telling you is the stir will give you a tell. And the tell is it stops squatting. And you can tell he's going into travel mode. He's about to start boogieing. So we'll come in here. We find the E100. I'm going to go to the lower plate. We'll just sneak one in there. I'm rushing these shots, quite honestly. Uh, RNG helped me out on a couple of these. I needed to let them zoom in just a little bit more. My concern was there were so many guns behind me, I wasn't going to get any damage. But I really could have spent a little bit more time zooming in, and they would have been better shots. <clears throat> Got a kind of a low hit point dude here. There's the E100 again. He dies. Having a little bit of trouble finding the targets I want. Again, a rush shot. I think it would have had a lot better one if I'd have waited just a second and gone for the back deck. He was moving up and down quite quickly, so to speak. But again, it was a rush shot. Now I'm starting to think, all right, let's clear out this end. Here's some nice hit points. Right into that pike nose. Still rushing the shots. The rushing the Russian shots here. I want to clear out this 1-2 line. Once we clear this out, now I can start doing something. And because I've got less guns on the map there's a little more opportunity for me to kind of move around and see what's going on. I know that Sturb is there and then we got this dude here thinking oh, oh and he just covers up just in time. And I know there's quite a few guys there and what I would really like to do is get down there and get some shots on him. The Sturb is the problem. The, the bummer is he's up on that ridge right there. I'd love to get rid of that guy. <clears throat> and one of the tanks down there is a Super Conqueror who's going to be able to use those ridges really well but you know what? We're starting to win. Let's just move in, man. I got 5,000 damage, 312. Let's see if we can add some spotting damage to this total. I'll just dodge down here. Hey, there's the stir. We found him. Sometimes scouting by fire is not a problem. Just do it. Light those guys up and let your buddies hit them. There you go. There's a little bit of spotting, a little bit of extra added on there. That's worth some experience. Here's the stir again. He's going to thump me. I uh, put a thump on him. I uh, put a thump on you. Nice fire added into it, but he, unfortunately he doesn't die. Now we've got an IS-7 sitting here. This thing does not have a 360 turret, so I have to kind of do, and then all of a sudden, oh crap, now the 103 or the Sturb 103 has done a pretty good job. He's actually, I got myself a little bit out in the open right there. He's got a nice little spot there where he can kind of creep up with some cover from the train and just because he's got that great gun depression, take shots on me. What I wanted to do was get high, back out, and get some nice shots on this IS-7. That's a bummer, but it was a heat shot, so I went into the track. Not that surprising. I was really wanting some assist, but he had a repair kit ready. So I'm going to try to kill this guy off. Oh, just barely missed him. So I didn't really get the amount of spotting that I wanted right here. I got some. I got to 825. I got to 622 in the damage. Being a little bit of a, a girl right here trying to wait for this guy to show up. And he ends up dying. Unfortunately, I don't get any of that damage. <clears throat> so we're at 6,222,877. You know what? Sometimes you can push with your, with your tank like this. You know, your glass cannon doesn't always have to sit in the bush. We were winning by miles. It was a relatively safe push. The sturve was a problem, but I was able to cover up from him. I was really glad this guy wasn't pointing at me. I kind of thought he might be just waiting for me to come around that corner. But I'll put a thump into the back of him. He's fighting multiple enemies, so I don't have to worry about him too much. I'm thinking, oh, am I going to get this kill? This would be great. Right in this old side here. He's trying to turn around. <laughs> Not so much. And we got a Centurion and an Object BB over here. The BB's down in the pit. I get HE'd by the Centurion AX, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> and there's 540 assists. Why? Because I pushed in. I went to a place nobody was. I started going, getting shots on him, and the BB dies down there. And I end up with 1,425 assists, 7,328 damage with three kills. 
my first ace tanker in the grill a a lot of stuff in that game went really well for me early on i had a lot of sniper shots which is what you want with the grill we took enough guns out of the game that while i was being mobile i wasn't being shredded Got a little bit pinned down by the Sturb. Unfortunate that he was right there and continued to be there, but he didn't really have anywhere to go, to be quite honest. He was cornered there. Was able to survive that and then just keep pushing in and getting a few more a few more spotting points in there. I think, I think that point is something people miss a lot, especially when they're driving these kinds of tanks. The mentality is that I am a I'm the glass cannon, I'm the sniper schnitzel, I'm the bush, the bush wanker. That so I do that the whole game without actually analyzing the dynamic situation that's happening and then going, you know what? I don't actually have to do that anymore. We're in good shape. Why don't I just get out there and, and get my gun in the game in a slightly different way? Maybe surprise the enemy because of where I'm showing up and what I'm doing. And I can grab some spotting and grab a little bit more damage. I take a few hits. Who cares? Maybe I even die. But at the end of the day, it's more damage and it's more assist. The trick there is to make sure you don't YOLO in too early and put your team at a disadvantage because all of a sudden the enemy team's starting to make a comeback. It's it's a fine line between uh, you know creativity and stupidity. So <laughs> that is all I've got for today. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you.